Hi, it's Jessica DeMassa with WTF Health. We have one of our favorites from HHS. It's the Chief Data Officer, Mona Siddiqui. Great to have you with us. Great to be here. All right, so there is so much going on in the world of HHS. I want to start out um, with data privacy. This has become, I mean, it feels like this issue has exploded over the last year, especially yeah. with some of the things happening on Facebook in particular mm -hmm. and with other big tech companies, 23andMe selling data, all of that. So what's happening at HHS is you guys are looking at providing some guidance for the rest of us in the industry. Yeah, so I agree. I think uh, as a just a citizen, I'm concerned around mm -hmm. this topic area. And so what we did actually is in the summer, we convened about 70 stakeholders from across industry. Um, lots of patients and patient advocates were represented as well. And we wanted them to really talk about the, the varying perspectives around risks and benefits okay. of getting access to data. Um, and uh, that report, which is essentially commissioned from an ind independent group, um, is going to put together all of the recommendations from those stakeholders and send that back uh, to me at HHS to say, here are our um, uh, suggestions for actionable things that HHS can be engaged in. So we're anticipating that report um, coming out next week. So, I mean, obviously you were in the room, so you heard a lot of things yeah. and a lot of the discussion. Yeah. Give us some insight on, of like, if we were a fly on the wall, what were some of the key takeaways for you? Yeah, I, so I think that there is obviously real concern around third-party commercial use of yeah. data. Um, and and a desire to really have greater transparency. I think these things aren't a big surprise, right? We all want transparency and accountability mm -hmm. and being able to trace how our data was used and by whom it was used and for, for what purpose. Um, so I think a lot of those things are going to come through the, that report. Um, and, and, in, and I think there are areas that are obviously completely unregulated right now. Um, I think an, a really interesting um, uh, thing to think about now is the fact that health, the definition of health data has changed, right? So um, the ways in which we traditionally think about health data was, okay, this is your EHR record, and this is health data. But really now um, it's more about the intended use of that data rather than the source of that data. Ooh, and so awesome. how, how do we think about um, regulating uh, data within that domain when so much information can be used for the purposes of figuring out um, how to tailor your healthcare needs? Um, and that's a very sort of changing landscape. So I, I think um, more to come in that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, no, and I think I, I love the way that you just articulated that because it's true. I mean, there's yeah. a lot of data that was not health data yeah. three or four years ago yeah. that now is, is being pulled into the fray. Some of that is some of the other data that you guys are looking at. And mm -hmm. so I know we were talking about, you know, the HHS and the strategy that you guys have to use the data you have access to, mm -hmm. to kind of, um, I don't know, look ahead and procrastinate some of the big health crises that are coming down the pike. And yeah. so you guys have done this with opioid in the past and yep. we have some news coming out of there. So give us an update on what, what has come out of the um, the work that HHS has done in the opioid space. Well, so I think one of the most exciting uh, pieces that came out of our opioid codathon was the launch of the uh, mapping tool of opioid take back programs across the country. Talk There's, more about that, yeah. Yeah, so so there were three winning solutions that came out of the codathon. One of those used HHS's data to map take back locations um, in one state. And those take back locations essentially are places where you can take back unused prescription pills um, so they don't fall into the hands of kids, for instance, in the home. And uh, and the team that developed that, um, Google saw that solution, and they worked with CVS and Walgreens to get additional pharmacy data wow. in about seven states, and they launched, um, uh, I believe it was in February of this year. Um, so within a year from developing a solution from an HHS event, um, launched on Google Maps, and recently added 10 more states, so about... I think greater than 7,000 locations are mapped on Google Maps. Again, so it shows really, I think, the power of data and the power of public-private partnerships when data can be leveraged in this way together. Absolutely. I mean, this is such a great, like, case study of how everyone can work together. And yeah. I think, like, in the industry, we're looking for that. Yeah. You know, I mean, and we're looking more on the commercial side of things. Yeah. And it's it's nice to see the HHS play a role and government play a role and, like, no, this is the right way to do it. Absolutely. Perfect reason to do it as well. Absolutely. You're focused on social determination determinants of health now, another yes. big thing that I Absolutely. feel like, especially lately, has been emerging. And I think it's just, it has part to do with the fact that, like you said, our definition of health data has changed. Yeah. So talk to me about the way HHS is looking at social determinants of health. What data are you pulling in and what are you guys trying to do, you know, in terms of just looking at that and, and impact change? Yeah. So 
you know, I think as the definition of, of the healthcare data is changing, we're also having very unusual partnerships developing and in, in support of collecting and utilizing the social determinants of health data. So I'm hosting a convening in the first week of October, again, bringing um, uh, health systems and payers and others together to talk about what's working and what's not working. Um, what are the strategies to be able to bring these partnerships together, to bring this data together in ways that are both sustainable and scalable, right? Um, so that there aren't sort of pilot programs, but um, but institutionalized ways of being able to share information that work ultimately for the patients. And that um, those organizations in the community that are so essential to be able, being able to impact um, uh, social determinants are actually able to get the information mm -hmm. that they need. And so what we're really interested in learning is what's working and how can we help facilitate through an infrastructure um, some of those partnerships. The other piece of it that's interesting is that, um, you know, we're siloed within the federal government. So for instance, the Department of Transportation has um, ambulance data that we don't have access to at HHS. And part of what we're also working while we're going to be looking at the health systems and payer side, the other piece is how do we connect information across the federal space from housing and from transportation um, and other places that is instrumental to making um, HHS's programs run better for all of us. It, can you do that? We can. Awesome. That's yeah. amazing. I mean, yeah. wow. <laughs> I'm surprised. I mean, I'm not surprised that it hasn't been done, but yeah. that is just such a, that's like a monumental undertaking. It, it is, but I think, you know, we don't go after sort of all of the data, you sort of tr uh, go use case by use, use case, case mm -hmm. and you build the capacity over time. Um, and that's been our approach. What can we learn, I guess, on, from the other side of this, yeah. the innovators out there, the yeah. startup companies, um, even the big private companies, the tech companies, as they're all looking at their data. Yeah. I mean, like you just said, you're in a, in a unique spot because you have access to a lot of data, but you're limited by what you can do because of the fact that it's your federal government organization. What can we learn from from the way you guys have approached things? I mean, I feel like case studies is a big lesson that you guys are, are, are drilling in. It's like, let's figure yeah. out how to do this and make it scalable, but let's let's see an example of it first. What else can we learn in terms yeah. of the way that we can use data in healthcare from your organization? I would say that there are a few core values to the work that we're engaged in. The first, as you mentioned, is um, use case by use case and really figuring out the problems that we want to solve. Um, the second is that uh, I've launched a full-scale data science training program for the department, so let's build a workforce that can actually utilize what we're building. That's exciting. Um, and that's enormous because it's an economic imperative for us. As, as a federal entity. Um, the other thing I would say that we're focused on um, is large-scale organizational change management. Um, I think interoperability and data sharing, uh, technology is a very small piece of it. The, the larger piece is really strategic business alignment and organizational change um, and all of the elements that are required within that. And so that is a huge, huge focus huge. for us. Um, and uh, and I had not realized when I took this role on that it would be um, perhaps you know not as much data, but much more on the organizational change. Um, but I think as all of us are grappling with how do we do interoperability, whether it's health systems or pairs, I would say that that is um, the thing to focus on the most. Looking ahead, last question for yeah. you this coming year. I mean, we got a lot going on here. Yeah. And, and this stuff is, I mean, it's obviously, it's very serious, but I mean, as far as, you know, w what you think the dominant issue is going to be, or the one that you want to tackle the most, I mean, it's like you're, you're working on making the best use out of the data that you have there at HHS. You're working on this, like, I mean, bringing together different governmental agencies and sharing data there. Mm -hmm. You're talking about data privacy, building yeah. out different use cases. Is, do you have like a, a favorite where you feel like if I make um, a little bit of movement here, if I make some inroads here, this is going to have a trickle down effect in terms of the way that we're doing anything else? Look, I, if ultimately, so I'm a primary care provider as well, right? So ultimately, it's all in service of making sure that our programs are running in the most effective and efficient way possible for all of us, right? Um, making sure that the resources that we're spending are actually impacting the outcomes that we care about. So if we're spending a billion dollars addressing an opioid epidemic, how are we tracking whether it's working? That's really the ultimate goal. Um, and the use cases, whether those are around opioids or value-based care um, or social determinants of health, they're all ultimately focused on that mission, which is let's become a more interoperable organization and let's become a more efficient and effective organization. Awesome, Mona. It's so great to talk to you and catch up. You're like one of the friendliest faces from HHS. We love it. No, it's true. It's true. So thank you so much for joining us. I'm Jessica DeMasa with WTF Health. Thanks so much for watching.